everybody, Carolina Risotto here. We are right now at one of the best stores in New York City. If you're a computer nerd, a camera nerd, or a tech nerd in general, B&H is the place to go. So it was originally founded in 1973 by Blimmy and Herman Schreiber. They were a couple, a Jewish couple, and you will actually see a lot of people from the Jewish community working here. But originally it started in a small location in Tribeca. Since then it's moved three times, and since 1997 they have been at this present location on 34th Street and 9th Avenue, which is right by the Empire State Building, Penn Station, the Highline Park. So it's a location that you're probably gonna pass by when you're touristing around New York City anyway, so might as well get in. As you can see right here, we have many, many impressive cameras, including some Reds, Sonys, Canons, all sorts of stuff. So this is like a freaking playground for anybody who's into technology and video equipment. So we're gonna explore a little bit, potentially buy something, because I've been looking into getting a new lens for my Sony. And let's go, let's explore this beautiful, wonderful store. Okay, so this is the Red Gemini, which my friend Topher, who's filming, owns. Beautiful camera. This is like for really high-end commercials and movies and Netflix, all sorts of stuff people use these things for. If you're gonna film a vlog like we're doing, you don't need a baby like this. But if you can take advantage of it, always use the more expensive cameras. <laughs> They do carry a certain weight, they need a certain amount of accessories. Like this camera doesn't come with a screen, there's just like this tiny screen here. You would usually need to buy an external monitor for something like this. Just look at these lenses. Look, the aperture goes as low as 1.5, which is really good, it gives you amazing depth of field. Now the lens, they do not come necessarily with the camera. With filmmaking in general, you always are going to buy everything separate. The camera and the lenses. So if you buy a camera that you can't change the lens, then you're not gonna be able to change the lens. So make sure you're happy with the, you know, the zoom range that you're gonna get with that camera. Professionals always have multiple lenses for the productions they do. Right now, we're using the 24 to 70 G Master from Sony. So you're gonna see that we're gonna vary a lot, you know, the zoom length throughout this video, <laughs> as you can see. So this is the Red Gemini. We're starting with the big baby right here. But over here, we have a few other ones, and so, these are actually like camcorders, so they're used a lot for journalism, stuff like that. When I was first living in New York City, the first years I lived here, I was using a Panasonic camcorder because I was filming for a Brazilian TV news called TV Bandeirantes, which is the equivalent of CBS in Brazil. I was working with their international correspondent. So I started my career using camcorders, and I think they're really practical. Usually have great battery life, good focal range. They're also awesome for live streaming, but as technology develops, people are using more and more like mirrorless cameras and stuff like that, which give you maybe more creative abilities to make the video what you want. I still really enjoy camcorders. I just love the feel of them. And they also give you like good support if you're filming for a long day. Because you know, you can put them on your shoulder. You know, they're really chunky. One thing that I really enjoy about them is that they usually have like audio inputs. So you can put like two microphones that you connect directly to the camera. So for journalism, this is really practical because then the microphone audio and the camera audio, they sync automatically. And so you get really high quality audio with your video without having to sync. And when you work with journalism, it's all about timing. You know, the news that happens this morning is gonna be old tomorrow morning. So you don't necessarily have time for all the post-production and syncing and stuff. So these babies, they make your life a lot easier because most cameras like mirrorless and DSLRs do not have that feature. So when you're gonna choose a camera, like there's so many things for you to think about. Do your research, try to understand why do I need a camera, what am I gonna use this for, and then take it from there. Otherwise, you're gonna buy something that maybe you don't need, but that's not gonna be practical. You're not gonna vlog with a camcorder. <laughs> this is not gonna work. And the good thing about vlogging is also just being discreet about the experience and showing maybe day to day, and people can be really intimidated by these cameras. If they're already intimidated by the regular mirrorless cameras, imagine something like this. So do your research and choose wisely. Sometimes I take months to decide before I buy an equipment. I go to the store, a place like this. I try it out. I ask questions to the staff. Do your research so you know what to ask. <laughs> Let's keep exploring the store and hit the actual camera department because this is just, you know, like for pro video. So there's more upstairs on the second floor. We're here on the second floor now. So you have like more specialized departments per brand. So we have Canon, Sony, Nikon, all here on the same floor. And they're all competitors. So there's always like, are you Canon, are you Sony, or Nikon? People like define themselves based on the brand they use. I used Canon for a long time. I've used Nikon before. I'm currently a Sony. 
it really varies a lot. Um, but the cool thing about the second floor is that over here in this whole space, you get to interact with things, which to me is really important before buying equipment, just to get to try it. And there are experts all over, like all these numbers that you see in the back here, these are all people who can assist you um, and help you like find the right lens for your project. Take your time, don't rush into a decision. When I was 17, I remember I bought a lens here, uh, which was a Canon 15 millimeter pry lens. Beautiful lens, but the thing is, it's not what I needed at that time. I was doing a lot of landscape photography, concert photography. I needed something with like a bit more of a zoom range, but I was like a little bit peer pressured because I didn't know what I was doing. They were like, this lens is amazing. And it really, really is, but I wasn't doing portraits at the time. And that's what it's mainly for. Think about your decision first, watch YouTube videos with reviews. Those are the best. My favorite guy is froknowsphoto.com and he shoots raw. That's his branding, I shoot raw. But let's take a look a little bit. The store is about to close, so let's do a quick tour. And, Cause it's a holiday, today's a holiday. And something for you to keep in mind, since it's administrated by you know the Jewish community, every Jewish holiday, it's closed. Business days are like Sunday through Friday. Plan around that and on holidays, the hours are always different, especially Jewish holidays. So I wanted to try um, a Sony lens with a bit more focal length, like towards the 200 millimeters, but I do a lot of like landscape photography and stuff like that. And so just, I need just a wide range. Ideally, you know, the lowest aperture possible, but also don't want to break the bank. So, so. unfortunately that doesn't exist. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The best I can do is the 24 to 240. Okay, I'll give that a try. Okay, you have a camera with you? I do. That's interesting. You know, camera is still an ongoing technology that's being developed, so oftentimes you're going to be looking for something that doesn't exist. And I just told her something that is not out there. They haven't invented it yet. And it's very common for lenses to be as expensive as camera equipment. So, as the camera itself, I mean, if not even more. Yeah. So, like this camera, it's a Sony Alpha 7C, it's around 1800. This lens uh, is, was 800, but for actual Sony, it's over $2,000. So it's ridiculous. All right. So she gave me 24 to 240, f 3.5 to 6.3. It's not super great for low lighting, but I don't do stuff at night all the time, so that's okay. Okay. So let's switch. It's heavy. <laughs> If you look right here, so this is an f6.3, let's lower that ISO. So it starts here at 24 millimeters. Look how far we can get. Like that's amazing. This is really nice. Sometimes, especially like when I wanna get a detail that's really far away or the top of a building like the Empire State, I would love to have something like this. Um, currently, the longest length I have is 17 to 16 millimeters. This is 200, this gives me so much more. Ah, exciting, let's see how much it costs. Uh, excuse me, how much does this lens cost? It's actually on promotion right now. Normally it's 1,048. Right now it's Oh wow, is it because of Labor Day? How popular is this lens? How it, has it been selling? Actually, it's quite popular because there's a lot of people that just want convenience. And I mean, just getting all the different lenses, it just gets really expensive. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to be doing a lot of travel content, so I've been needing something like this. Oh, shit. Thank you so much. I'm still learning, but I really appreciate that. So when you're switching lens, you want to do it fast because you don't want anything to get in the sensor. Oh. All right. My baby. Thank you so much. I'm definitely going to think about this one. OK. By the way, this is my camera bag. So it's like water resistant, it has a hard shell so it protects the equipment. And then just break down, you can kind of shape it to whatever you want it to be. I got my rocket, I have my polarizers, my Rodeo Mic Pro, which is just good for vlogging because sometimes you start talking to people, and my camera. And this is the other lens I have, so it's really tiny because the aperture is so low, but it's so light, so I can film all day without a problem. Even with this wide one that I have now, it's heavier than that one and it has a smaller focal length just because of the way the lenses have to be built to get more light inside. So it's better for night, for night content and just gives you a more beautiful depth of field. All right, let's take this baby home and let these people enjoy the holiday because the store is about to close. Thank you so much. You too. But that lens is on sale, $100, which is 
which is rare for Sony. They don't have sales going on all the time, so I'm definitely intrigued. <laughs> but I'm probably going to purchase it online if I do so. But I'm just going to think on it. I'm going to think about it and see how much I really need it because it's still a lot of money, you know, $1,000. Taxes, you know, but one day at a time. <laughs> As you can tell, I was extremely hyped up to be a b &H. To me, it's like being a little kid in the playground, you know? When I arrived there, I was like, oh my god, I have like 30 minutes to go around the store and share some information. So I kind of just went with my gut and shared a massive amount of info. So I hope this video wasn't too overwhelming. Now, you might be able to tell from the view here um, that this is not LA. This is not a typical LA view, guys. I actually moved to New York. I've been here since mid-January. It's been quite the process. These vlogs that I've been releasing, New York City's part one, two, three, and this one, they're all a part of the same trip where I decided to move back to New York City. It was completely unexpected. And when I got to LA, I felt a major sense of urgency to come back. And four months later, here I am. So make sure to watch the other vlogs if you haven't. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't. Come on, bro, subscribe. Help a girl out. I'm Carolina Risotto, and I will obviously see you next week. All right, <laughs> I think that's a first. Um, that felt very nice to say, holding myself accountable here. <laughs>